so what are the what are our entries for issuing stock? Let's go ahead and look at this on the dry erase board. Uh, remember earlier we did when we did uh, the sole proprietorship, we just did cash and we credited uh, a capital account for the individual owner. Kind of a similar thing here. Cash is going to be debited, and here we have common stock. is our credit. Okay, the big thing you need to know is this common stock credit entry is for the par value only. This is the only amount that goes into the common stock account, account as a credit upon issue. Now remember what I said, this par value is pretty arbitrary, doesn't have anything to do with the cash that's received. It's basically just the minimum amount, amount that we could issue a stock for. So oftentimes we're going to issue a stock that's greater than uh, the par value. So let's look at an example of that. Let's say we issue, we'll just do real simple numbers here. We, we issue one share of uh, common stock for $100, the par value is 10. Okay, so what would we do here? Well, we got $100 from cash that's coming in as a debit. We're only going to put the par value there for a common stock credit. That's going to be 10. So what is the additional credit to make debits and credits go? Well, this is paid in capital in excess of par. Sometimes you call it additional paid in capital, or you see it as APIC. APIC, uh, I've written in the study guide, paid in capital in excess of par. This is just an adjunct account that goes with the common stock. We keep them separate so that we know how much of par value we have in our common stock account. And this is the amount that uh, common stock is issued greater than par. So remember, paid in capital in excess of par. Uh, so we would put the 90 there. That would be our entry for one common stock, par value of 10, sold for $100. Okay, let's go to the next page there. Um, talk about dividends. Now, dividends are like withdrawals, except for they're the corporation version. Remember when we did withdrawals, we debited withdrawals and we credited the cash, and then withdrawals were closed to the owner's capital account for a sole proprietorship or a partnership. Now, we have a new account called dividends, which is just a corporate version. So there's three dates that we need to look at. The date of declaration, whenever the uh, board of directors declares that there's going to be a dividend, this is the date where an actual liability exists. So nothing exists, um, regardless of whatever the stock uh, certificates say. Sometimes, they, remember we talked about in arrears? Well, even if we go into arrears, that doesn't necessarily create a liability. Only a liability is created whenever the board of directors declares a dividend. So on that date, uh, we have a liability that we set up on the uh, declaration date. What is our entry here? Well, we debit dividends and we credit dividends payable for whatever the total amount of our dividend is going to be. Now, the second date is the date of record. Now, this is not, we're going to put one here, two here, three here, and looking at the entries here. This one is not applicable. There's no entry on the date of record. Essentially what this does is it picks a date in the calendar and says the stockholders as of this date are going to receive the dividend. So this might have been made on uh, January 10th and it says that on January 20th the stockholders of record are going to receive the dividend. And it doesn't actually pay them on that date. It's just so the accounts can go into the records and see who is uh, authorized to receive this dividend. That is the date of record, no entry there. And then finally, on the date of payment, we take this off the books. Dividends payable is debited. Cash is credited. So we got that, we see the dividend payable. Let's look at this just uh, in a T account version. Here's our dividends payable. We see it coming in as a liability there. Later on when we pay it off, we're debiting it. So it should have a zero balance once we pay that off, okay? Uh, stock dividends and stock splits. Review that on page 458 to 460. Uh, there's a difference in accounting between how we account for a large uh, and a small stock split. So know the difference. I think it's 20 to 25 percent, the threshold difference between what is considered small and what is considered large. So I review that. Uh, stock splits as well as the stock dividends. Treasury stock, uh, this is what we talked about a minute ago between the difference between issued and outstanding. Treasury shares are the shares that were once issued, but then the company goes back out of the market to reacquire them. Why do they do this? I've given you a couple of reasons there. Um, sometimes you have employee stock programs where we issue stock to employees. We issue those out of treasury stock. So we 
uh, actually go back into the market and we buy some of those so we can issue them as compensation to employees. And also another reason is to control the supply uh, of shares in the market. So if we're having a really rough year and our stock isn't doing well, a lot of times we go back out and we buy some of those shares so that the supply out there for investors is less so that we, we maintain a, a consistent uh, share price in a difficult period. So review these entries on 464 to 466. And then also uh, the presentation, which is really important. There's a new statement, uh, statement of stockholders equity. You haven't seen this before. So look at that on page 468 and make sure you understand those as one of the key uh, financial statements that you'll see. So what are the four main financial statements? Balance sheet, um, income statement, statement of stockholders equity, and the fourth one is statement of cash flows, which we will look at in chapter 12.